One of the terrific features available in the latest digital autopilots is VNAV, or Vertical Navigation. If you have a Garmin GTN Series Navigator and a GFC 500 or GFC 600 autopilot, you can use VNAV to descend to the charted altitudes along the intermediate stages of an instrument approach until you reach the final approach fix. VNAV is also available on most G1000 systems equipped with the GFC 700 autopilot. You can also use VNAV when flying a STAR, a standard terminal arrival route, such as the MADI-4 at Bellingham, Washington. Note that other avionics manufacturers are adding VNAV to their systems, so check the websites of those companies for the latest information. VNAV is most useful in high-performance aircraft, but a few procedures in the current inventory, like the RNAV GPS Runway 1-2 approach at Kelso, Washington, show how this feature can reduce workload and ensure a smooth descent to the final approach fix, even when you're the pilot of a typical piston-powered airplane, like the Beechcraft A36 Bonanza that I fly. The RNAV Runway 1-2 approach at Kelso can be a challenge. The procedure includes several course changes and a series of step-down altitudes as you align with the runway. The glide path angle on this approach is also 4 degrees, 1 degree steeper than a typical GPS-based LPV glide path or ILS glide slope. That doesn't sound like much, but you must adjust your normal configuration to fly a stable descent. As you'll see in this video, VNAV can help you maintain a smooth, precise descent to meet each of the crossing restrictions during the intermediate stages of the approach. When you reach the final approach fix, the autopilot cancels VNAV and intercepts and captures the glide path or glide slope to track the vertical guidance to the missed approach point. Before we try this approach in the airplane, let's review the details of the procedure and use the Garmin PC Trainer Suite, a free simulation you can download from the Garmin website, to preview how I set up and flew the approach with the Garmin G500 TXI, GTN 750XI, and GFC 600 Autopilot installed in my A36. I flew this approach after a VFR hop from Boeing Field in Seattle to Kelso, which is north of Portland, Oregon. In the airplane, I joined the approach on the leg between Onals and Klupp, since I was VFR in a cloudless sky, I flew the initial legs at 3,500 feet instead of the charted 4,000 feet. In the simulation that follows, you'll see the procedure flown as charted, beginning at Onals. At Onals, you track a series of intermediate segments that take you south, then southeast before you turn onto the final approach course outside Angie, the final approach fix. The profile view of the approach chart shows the altitudes published for each segment. At Angie, you intercept the LPV glide path at 1,900 feet and follow that approved vertical guidance due to the decision altitude of 608 feet, where you can continue to a landing or start the missed approach. Here's how the flight plan, with the approach loaded, appeared in the GTN 750XI. To fly the approach, I activated the leg between Onals and Klupp. When you activate a leg or proceed direct to a fix that appears below the procedure title, the approach is active and the navigator sequences through the waypoints that define the approach. In the simulation, I'm flying that first leg of the approach, level at 4000. When I'm established on a published segment and cleared for the approach, I set the altitude bug on the G500 PFD to 1900 feet, the crossing altitude published at the final approach fix. Then I arm VNAV on the GFC 600 autopilot. That action commands the autopilot to descend as necessary to fly the published altitudes for each intermediate leg of the approach, as shown in the flight plan in the GTN 750. With the GFC 600, I can also arm approach mode at this point. As you'll see, when the airplane intercepts the GPS glide path near the final approach fix, the autopilot changes from VNAV to glide path mode to track the LPV glide path down the final approach segment to the DA. Now let's fly that approach in the Bonanza under VFR. I've cut out the radio chatter and squeals. Kelso shares a CTAF with several nearby airports that were busy on that sunny day. 
Instead, I'll explain what's happening as you watch the avionics do their magic. Here I'm at 3,300 feet, established on the leg between Yepek and Corsa. The VNAV marker, a magenta carrot symbol that appears on the glide path scale left of the altitude tape, is dropping to show that the autopilot is about to begin the descent to cross Corsa at 2,700 feet, the next intermediate altitude. Next, the autopilot turns to the final approach course at Uxale, 2.5 miles from the final approach fix. The GFC 600 continues tracking the VNAV marker to the next intermediate altitude, 1,900 feet. If you look closely, you can see the hollow gray diamond marker on the glide path scale. It's a preview of the LPV glide path. When the airplane intercepts the LPV glide path near the final approach fix, the VNAV marker disappears, and the glide path marker becomes a solid magenta diamond. The autopilot also cancels VPath and enunciates glide path to confirm that it's following vertical guidance on the final approach segment. Now observe what I can only charitably describe as a Navy landing. I'm glad no one was watching from Vulture's Row above the flight deck. The firm touchdown was a reminder that the GFC 600 doesn't feature auto land, and I hadn't adequately compensated for the steeper than normal approach.
To learn more about the VNAV feature, watch the video produced by Garmin. You can find more details and a link at my blog.